The Bible is, in many ways, the stories of different individuals and not only how they lived, but how they were able to take the truth and revelation that God had given to them and pour it into the subsequent following generations. Abraham received a call from God and a revelation from God. We call that truth. And we see that um, was instilled into his son Isaac, also into his grandson Jacob, and then ultimately into Jacob's um, descendants. We um, refer to them as the 12 tribes of Israel. Something very revealing is just given to us in Genesis 18. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him. And he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord and do justice and judgment, that the Lord might bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. God says, I know this guy, and he's going to talk to his kids. He's going to sit down with his grandchildren, even as an old patriarch. It's pretty well assured that this truth is not going to be lost in this family. There are generations recorded in scripture. It's not just the story of individual men. It's the story of generations. And if we now fast forward from Abraham to the story of Moses and how that the people of Israel are being taken out of the bondage that they had been in for hundreds of years in Egypt, we find that there were times where they did good. We call that revival. I call it in green. And there are times when they didn't do so good. Um, bad would be a good way to describe it. And notice that if they stayed in the bad for any length of time, it created a problem. This happened only once in the history of the descendants of Abraham, and it was during the lifetime of the prophet Jeremiah. Four bad generations in a row. And when that happened, God called Jeremiah as a prophet. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then I said, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. God knew it was time to call this man in that fourth generation. But the Lord said unto me, Say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And throughout his life, until old age, this man Jeremiah had a message for the people of that fourth generation. Jeremiah ministered during the reigns of the kings of Judah, Josiah, Jehoaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, Zedekiah, and ultimately Gedaliah, who was considered a governor. And again, you can see it on the chart that these were evil for generations. I want to talk about the incurable iniquity of the fourth generation. Genesis 15, going back to the first book of the Bible, God said unto Abram, 
Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Shall serve them, they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Thou shalt go unto thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. And this is a prophecy to Abraham concerning the Egyptian bondage. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. God used Israel coming out of Egypt as a judgment of another people in their fourth generation. The iniquity of the Amorites. What if a generation arises that knows not the Lord? Judges chapter 2. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. It's possible that one generation doesn't carry the truth, the revelation, the desire, the faith, into the following generation. What happens? Psalm 78. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. It's possible for a following generation to be restored, to be brought to repentance and renewal and refaith. And it says, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, whose spirit was not steadfast with God. It's possible for a following generation to get back what their previous generation had somehow lost. And God will work and plead with generation after generation to bring them back to faith and restoration. Again, this is to Jeremiah, who came in the fourth generation of not knowing the Lord. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. That's three generations. You, your children, and their children. But what about that fourth generation that doesn't know God? There is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, whose jaws and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among them. That fourth generation. Three generations, but four generations seems that it's beyond the promise. And I personally have seen many times where the elderly great-grandmother, great-grandfather, at 75, 80 years of age, is able to somehow reach down and talk to the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. But once that connection is gone, so is this message. We are over.